All right, guys, we're gonna go over and show you how to use this RV. First of all, the propane tank is located right here. To access it, you just lift right off this lid and then underneath is the tank. Uh, right behind that, you actually have your battery box. Hopefully you never need to get in there for anything, but that's where it's located. Every corner has a little stabilizer jack. They are just stabilizers. There's a little hand crank in here. You're gonna wind it down and then that just stabilizes the RV so when you're walking inside, it doesn't wobble on you. There's a large storage compartment here. Uh, you can put some gear in here, but that's where you're gonna find the majority of the gear that comes with it, like the power cord and the sewer hose and that kind of stuff. There's a decent awning on this guy. Just remember, if it's windy, rainy, stormy, anything like that at all, make sure it's closed. They cost $1,900 to replace. If you break one arm, it's still $1,900 that comes in a kit. So just make sure you're really careful with these. We recommend if you're not sitting underneath it, you have it closed. And, and absolutely don't forget when you go to bed to keep it closed. Um, as you come around, this right here can get really hot. It's an exhaust vent, so make sure you're not leaning any gear against that or anything. Um, and you shouldn't be leaning any gear against the RV at all. Uh, don't put like a pop-up tent, tra tent thing right by it that scrapes it in the wind. We've had that. Uh, just remember when you walk inside, it will wobble a little bit. So if something's on there, it'll rub on it and you could tear the stickers and things like that. Uh, once again, you have your little stabilizer jack on the corner. And then as we come around, this is what separates this travel trailer from the rest. This is pretty awesome. It's a rear entry trailer. To access it, you just lift this up, you turn it like this, you're gonna open up the door and that's where your steps are. A couple things on the steps. Each leg moves independently so that you can make sure your stairs are level. To do that, uh, first of all, to open it, you're just gonna pull this blue lever right here. You're gonna come this down and then there's a little button here and one over here. And if you push this in, you can raise and lower each leg independently. Make sure anytime you're operating the door, this or the stairs, the door is 180 degrees open, completely out of the way. See this little guy right here? If your door is not open, it will bend the metal here. So just make sure that's out of the way. You're gonna set these guys down like this, make sure your each leg's adjusted properly. And one other thing you wanna make sure is that right here is flush, right here where it folds down. If this is raised or anything and you go to shut the door, it'll bend at the bottom of the door and I'm sure you don't wanna pay for a new door. Um, anyways, when you close it, uh, everything should be working perfectly and flush. And then um, when you're going to go ahead and, and wrap up and go home, all you're gonna do, make sure your door once again is 180 degrees. You're gonna flip this guy back up just like this, the blue lever you're gonna pull, it'll lock it into place, close it up. And then you're gonna swing this guy right back like this. And then when you travel, you always wanna flip it over like this. This is a glass door. So just make sure you're careful with the door. Um, and then hopefully you never need it, but there is a spare tire. Just remember, trailers do not come with, with a jack for changing a tire. You would actually use your vehicle jack to change the tire. So uh, just be aware of that. As we come around, you have some more stabilizer jacks. And then on the back side here is where your dump station is. Um, to dump it, there's gonna be a sewer hose in the compartment. You're gonna go ahead and hook it on here. There's two pull valves, a black one and a gray one. You're always gonna pull the black one. It's kind of behind the tire here. You're gonna pull the black one first, let it all drain out, and then you'll close it up. Then you'll pull the gray handle. That's the shower water and the sink water. That'll kind of flush out the sewer hose. Um, right here is a tank flush. You can hook a hose to this and then run water through the black tank. Just make sure to flush it out. So just make sure anytime you have water hooked to this, you have the black valve open. Once again, make sure you have the black valve open. If it is not, you will back up the toilet and it'll flood inside to the trailer. So make sure you have that pulled anytime you're running water through. And then right here, uh, and that's the black handle, not the gray one. Um, right here is your power connect. You'll, your, the power cord's in there, you're gonna hook that on here, and then the other one's gonna plug into the generator or plug in at the RV park. One note, if you're plugged in an RV park and you're like, hey, there's no power, this isn't working, turn on the breaker at the box at the park. Most of the time, those are shut off, so always double check your breaker. 99% of the time, if we get a call, it's gonna be somebody didn't flip the breaker. So just check that. And then as we come around, this right here is for the hot water heater. It's, it gets hot, this is the exhaust system here. Um, just make sure once again, nothing's leaning on the trailer, nothing's touching the trailer. And then lastly, here's your water fill, okay? You have a, this one right here on the top is for filling up the water tank. Uh, and then this one on the bottom is like for city water connect, like at an RV park. 
we never recommend you use the bottom one, okay? The water pressure at the park might be too high. The plumbing in these trailers is not like the plumbing at your house. They're just, they're just uh, plastic uh, hoses with clamps on them. So if this is on constantly, you're gonna get dripping and leaking of water inside the RV. So if you did use this one for some reason, always go outside, turn off the spigot. Then when you're gonna use the water, go back outside, turn it back on and you'll be coming inside and outside a lot, just make sure, make, to make sure that um, the water is turned off all the time. If you fill the water tank, all you need to do is turn on the water pump anytime you use it. When you're done, you turn the water pump off and you're good to go. Don't ever go to sleep with pressurized water, uh, meaning the water is turned on at the park, or you leave the water pump on overnight. You don't wanna do that either, because once again, it's gonna leak, there's pressure in there. Um, so just be aware of those things. All right, so we're gonna head on inside and uh, we'll go over and show you how to use everything in there. Let's head on in. All right, guys, we're gonna go how, over how to use the interior. First of all, here are all your gauges. You have the hot water heater button here and your water pump. And then these are just your, your tank guides, okay? We call them guides because they're not always 100% accurate. Usually they're not accurate at all. So just be aware of that. You have your, your battery level, your fresh water, your black water, and your gray water buttons here along with those two that we already talked about. Up on top, you do have a stereo system. There are some inside and outside speakers, so that's kind of nice. You do have your awning uh, uh, extend and retract button. Just remember, um, since you're not out the front or out the side of the RV on this one, you have somebody out there, just make sure you don't open up the awning into something. Um, and then you have your awning lights, you have a porch light, and then you have the interior lights. As we come through here, at the very bottom, there's a couple things. You have your, your heater right here, and then you have an electrical panel like you would at your house. So there's some fuses and some, some breakers in there. Hopefully you never need to check in there for anything, but uh, if some power's not working, that might be a place for you to check. Um, we're gonna start with the fridge in here. So first of all, when we usually do the fridge, we go ahead and light the burners first um, on the stovetop. That just gets all the air out of the gas line and all that, and then you can come over here and start this. To start this, all you're gonna do, there's two buttons in here. There is a on off button and then a gas button. Um, you will, if you're dry camping or boondocking, you'll have the gas button out. And then if you are at an RV park, you can just leave it in. Just remember, these take about four to six hours to get cold from when you start them. Um, so you make you wanna make sure you have enough time for that. Also, we wanna go over these handles with you. These handles are extremely delicate. Um, usually a teenager or somebody in the family might just rip them open. And these are just two plastic little pieces that keep it connected. And unfortunately, of course, they're patented from the manufacturer and each one is about $50. So just be really careful with the door handles. And then lastly, on the interior here, there is a little switch, a slider on the corner here. That's your temperature control. If the freezer is frozen, um, but the fridge is not getting cold, uh, you wanna go ahead and double check that that has not fallen down. And if it has, you're just gonna put it back on the, the, the metal grate there and slide it up uh, for the temperature control. Uh, right here, a couple things. You really don't need to worry about this panel up here, but this is gonna be your heater and your air conditioner and the fan um, control. So the bottom button here is gonna cycle through each one of those modes. And then the up and down is obviously your temperature control. Um, we're gonna go into the bathroom here and take a look. Uh, this is an awesome bathroom for this little guy. There's a foot flush uh, toilet. Just remember when you're using the toilet, you wanna make sure you use enough water. And the only thing that goes down the toilet is RV toilet paper. No, no wipes, no, nothing like that. Just RV toilet paper. It disintegrates with the chemicals uh, and that way it won't clog up on you. And, and like I said before, you wanna just make sure you're using enough water um, in the toilet as well. I'm gonna shut this door real quick and then we're gonna go through a few things back here. Um, this is where the air conditioner comes out. There's a little control here for how much air you want for airflow. Um, you do have a convection microwave oven right here. Just remember any apply any major um, appliance like the air conditioner or the, the uh, microwave needs a generator on and running or to be plugged in at an RV park. Um, you do have a uh, two burner top here. This you lift up. You do not cook on the glass. This is not a glass cooktop. It, you lift it up and now it is near your backsplash. Um, and then there's two burners. These knobs are made out of plastic. And we have noticed that people might use a large pan here and it will melt these. So if you're going to use a large pan, make sure it stays away from these. And maybe it's just better if you use the left side over here. Uh, let it cool down when you're done and then you'll go ahead and close that up. You have a nice little sink. Uh, you have a television. Just one thing, one note. 
the television does not have like a DVD player or anything like that. So uh, if you want to watch DVDs, you can bring your own DVD player and plug it in and work it off of there. Um, and then as we come around, this is pretty awesome. It's a nice little dinette seating area or it converts into a bed. And to do that, all you do, oh, there's two poles right here. You'll lift the tabletop off, remove the poles. This tabletop's gonna drop down onto these little bump stops. It just rests on top. And then you're gonna take the two rear cushions or the back cushions, and you're gonna put it on top of the table. And then you're gonna fold out the bed on top of that. And this makes a large sleeping area, which is great. Um, this RV is really fantastic. You guys are going to love it. It's easy to tow. It's one of the most unique ones we have. We know you guys are going to love it and we can't wait to see you. We'll see you soon.